in line and with the times Cause that's what good people do Shine up your shoes, put on your suit So we can fit in with you Hi everyone, I'm Jessica Kumari on this Tuesday, May 25th. It's the last Tuesday show of the season. The countdown is on to summer, but before school's out, we'll tell you about the ultimate gift one teacher gave to her student. And we'll also introduce you to the youngest person to ever climb to the top of the world. That's coming up next. Channel One News starts now. Starting off the show with headlines from around the world, and Adriana, you have the first one. Well, tensions have escalated on the Korean Peninsula, and South Korea is asking the international community to take action against the North. It comes after what South Korea says was the deliberate sinking of a warship by the North Koreans, which killed 46 sailors two months ago. North Korea denied the attack, even after the South found torpedo parts it says came from the North. Now, South Korea has announced it will stop almost all trade with its neighbor to the north, and it wants the United Nations Security Council to also punish North Korea. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton met with leaders in China, North Korea's closest ally. She pushed the Chinese to take a harder stance toward North Korea. This is a, a highly um, precarious uh, situation that um, the North Koreans have caused. Ban Ki-moon, the United Nations Secretary General, said that the Security Council had to react to the sinking of the ship, although he didn't exactly say what that reaction would be. Now, Ali, you've got a story that sounds like a sci-fi movie. Well, it's not Frankenstein yet, but scientists say they've created the first artificial life form. It's a cell that's powered by man-made DNA. Researchers designed the DNA and assembled it with the machine. The genome was then transplanted into a cell and grew. This is the first self-replicating species that we've had on the planet whose parent is a computer. His team's also trying to design cells that can speed up vaccine production. And that's not all. Scientists believe that man-made cells could do everything from powering your car to cleaning polluted water. And a 13-year-old found himself on top of the world after breaking a big world record. On Saturday, Jordan Romero from Big Bear, California became the youngest person ever to reach the summit of Mount Everest, the tallest mountain on Earth. Mount Everest is part of the Himalayas mountain range and located on the border of Nepal and Tibet. Jordan scaled up 29,035 feet on the Tibetan side of the mountain to its summit where the temperature was about 50 degrees below zero. It was definitely harder than I thought it would be. He wasn't alone. His dad, his dad's girlfriend, and three local mountaineers joined him for the four-day journey. We prepared so much for it and it was, and it was totally worth it. It was the, it was the, time of our lives. About 4,000 climbers have reached the top of Mount Everest since it was first climbed in 1953. Jordan's goal is to climb the highest mountains in all seven continents, and so far he's already done six. The final peak is Vincent Massif in Antarctica, which he hopes to tackle at the end of the year. All right, now coming up, you asked and we've got the answers. Justin Finch breaks down the oil spill in the Gulf. Normalcy is ideology. It's meant to keep you in place. Got issues, don't let them convince you that you're not okay, just the way that you are. The music you're hearing in today's show is by Transmit Now. Go to channel1.com for more great music and this year's Hear It Now Artist of the Year. Revolution Earth is presented by the motion picture The Last Airbender in theaters this July. Today in our Revolution Earth series, we'll take a look at the environmental impact of the oil spill in the Gulf. And Justin Finch answers your questions. Thanks, Jess. The spill now covers some 150 miles of Gulf coastline. And as it grew, so did your questions to our Facebook page. And our first one is from Caitlin Nan Mayorga. Hey, Channel One News, how long do you think the oil spill will last? Great question, Caitlin Ann, but it's also tough to answer, but I'll try to tackle it here in two parts. Now first, BP says it may be able to plug the leak sometime this week. BP outlined its latest strategy in the New York Times last weekend. If it works, we should get the job complete that day on Wednesday. The company's planning something called a top kill. A top kill would pump a mud mixture from the surface down into the well and choke valves. If it works, it would clog and stop the oil flow. I am angry and I am frustrated that BP has been unable to stop 
this well from leaking and to stop the pollution from spreading. But even if the leak is plugged by Wednesday, Caitlin Ann, experts say the environmental impact is already devastating. You can see the oil uh, on the pelican's eggs. You can see the oiled birds not able to fly or, or swim. Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal toured the oil-covered coastline over the weekend, where rescue workers are cleaning off pelicans covered in crude. And sea turtles have turned up along Gulf Coast beaches dead. A similar scene to this one off Alaska's Prince William Sound more than 20 years ago. That's when the Exxon Valdez tanker spilled oil that killed thousands of fish and wildlife. Even today, species are still recovering and traces of oil can still be found just a few layers under dirt and sand. And all this could mean more trouble ahead for the Gulf Coast ecosystem and the animals and the people who depend on it. And that brings us to our next question from Nathan Gore. He asks, hey, Channel One News, I want to know if the oil spill in the Gulf Coast can affect people too. Nathan, soon after the spill, federal officials began closing off large parts of the Gulf, and those now polluted waters could ruin the livelihoods of many fishermen and shrimpers. People come over here to eat good uh, seafood from the bayou. Everybody, these charter fishermen that you're looking at today, they, they, they don't have a livelihood anymore. Our last question is from Emily Morgan, who asked, Channel One News, I was wondering if the oil spill affects global warming in any way. Well, Emily, so far we haven't found a definite link between the spill and global warming, but scientists are still investigating, so your question and many more will take a while to answer. But guys, thanks for your questions, and Jess, back to you. BP has committed to covering the cost of the cleanup. So far, it's more than $760 million. But the truth is that we're all messed up in our own messed up world.